questions? Yes. Uh, given the uh, North won the, the war. Uh, Did it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reconstruction, Actually, Reconstruction followed. What happened to the abolitionist movement when things began to fall apart in terms of civil rights and opportunity for African Americans? Okay. Uh, the, the question is, what happens uh, to, to abolition, <clears throat> the abolitionist impulse, if I understand you correctly, yeah. when Reconstruction fails? Yes. Well, there are a few abolitionists who continue. A lot of them have died. I mean, you have to remember that. Uh, that uh, but actually, I think uh, William Lloyd Garrison ends the Liberator 65 or 66 because he thinks the struggle's over. We don't need this uh, any, anymore. Uh, for the most part, among whites, the abolitionist impulse dies. Uh, if, if you want to see a survival, you look at people like Francis uh, Grimke, another graduate of Princeton, uh, who was pastor at, um, uh, again, the fifth, I think it was the 15th Avenue uh, 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 Presbyterian uh, uh, Church in, in uh, Washington, D.C. For, for most of his career. Uh, he's noted for having opposed the reunion of the Cumberland Presbyterians uh, with uh, the Northern Presbyterian Church, and he was proposed because one of the terms of agreement was to allow racially segregated presbyteries to sort of overlap each other. And he he stood up and and eloquently pled his cause before the Washington uh, uh, Presbytery, and was still uh, the vote there was still in favor of, of the union. And so that's where you see it there. I think what happens among white uh, church people is something a bit more subtle. Uh, I would argue that what was needed to make justice real after the war was probably structural or systemic reform combined with a prolonged federal presence in the South. Uh, given the passions that had been unleashed, and the fact that the slaves, had, uh, the ex-slaves had no viable economic base for the most part uh, under them. I think the land reform should have been done. There certainly would have been ar uh, an argument to be made, and many so-called radical Republicans made this argument, that the, the planters had forfeited their property rights. Just to, they, they lost their slaves, well, they ought to forfeit their property because they had been in rebellion. And if there had been land reform, and perhaps white poor whites as well as blacks had been included in that, then there could have been a community of economic interest between the two. But I think even if that had been done, there would have needed to be some kind of prolonged federal presence against things like the Klan that, that were springing up early on. But, but this is precisely what the North had no will for. Yeah, they thought the job was done. Okay, you say they're free, you give them the, uh, you give them impartial suffrage to the men, it's done. We can go home. We could go home. It's, <laughs> it's 6.30, oh, yes, and uh, uh, I think it was time for perhaps one more question, if there's one more question. If not, we'll say deep thanks to Jim Moorhead. Fred, you got you want to close? The, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank thank you, you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Friends, there, uh, there, there's plenty of food to eat. Uh, you're welcome to please make sure you take a look at the exhibit. Some of you may have not had the opportunity to see that. Uh, you'll see, uh, you'll get a real education about Presbyterians in the war by doing that. So please make sure you can see the exhibit. Uh, there is plenty of food left, so you know, please uh, pig out and enjoy. With the exception of the board members, uh, I need my board members because we have a 6:45 dinner reservation somewhere, and, and we have to, we have to do that. So, or else I'm in trouble. So thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And please feel free to come back and visit us again. Thank you.